All right, so I'm Brian Valenti. I'm with Red Rock Micro. Um, this is actually our 10th year anniversary for being in business, so it's been, everything's been really wonderful. Uh, for NMB in 2015, this is a tech, uh, I want to show you a new technology we've been working on. It's a preview. It's, it's the first day it's actually ever been seen. And this is something we've been working on for about the last three years. I call it our avatar product because we've been waiting five years for the technology to catch up to the point where we can actually do the things that I'm about to show you. We think it's pretty amazing and pretty exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this. This is a part of it. It's called our Halo system. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to solve the problem of selective focus and focus tracking. We wanted to do it in a very specific way. Um, there's a lot of different levels of, of production and uh, experience that are out there, anywhere from a, a neophyte or maybe a single operator who's just like, look, I just need you to handle focus for me, do everything for me, up to the super seasoned professional AC who's like, look, I know how to pull focus, I just need better tools to do it because things are getting so high resolution and you know, uh, people are shooting increasingly wide open, I just, I, I'm at a hard time keeping up. And there's this sort of this huge amount of gray in between of some combination of those things where most of us fit. Like we're not completely neophytes, but you know, we're not out there with decades of experience knowing how to pull focus just based on sight. So this is really what Halo is about. This interface I'm showing you here, we've also replicated up into this uh, monitor here if you want to take a look at it. Uh, what you're looking at, this is a, a preview of our new um, handheld remote. It's a three-channel remote system. You see I have Zoom here, I've got my iris that I can move about, and I have my focus wheel. So number one is we want to create a much better experience for people pulling focus. You can see that not only do I have information about uh, sort of a real-time uh, distance marking, but also it tells me the, how far I'm focused, and it gives me a real-time uh, visual preview of the depth of field. So as I'm moving it back and forth, as I focus closer, there's less depth of field. As I'm moving it further out, I get more depth of field. If I adjust the iris, for example, I can get more depth of field. So it's given me a lot more information as a focus puller to understand, like, this is what's going to be in focus and this is what it isn't. In order to make it a little bit more predictive, I'm going to have my buddy Omar here jump up and start moving. We're going to turn on a device. This is called the Halo Explorer. It's uh, the same technology that's used in autonomous cars for collision detection and avoidance. So you understand it's sort of all seeing and all knowing and instantly reacting. And we've taken that technology and adapting it for this. So when I turn it on, so you can see there's Omar and there's the dartboard. And as Omar walks around, you can actually see that he's tracking. So number one is I've got a better way to pull focus. So all I really need to do is basically keep him on this line. And you can see that as, as I'm also keeping him with my depth of field, I know that he's going to be in focus. He seems to be a very enthusiastic and motivated walker. Um, so this is a great way, an example of where we're talking about better tools and better visualization, how to pull focus. You're anticipating where people are going. You understand what's available to you in terms of the depth of field. Um, and it's just a better way to, to go about doing it. Now where it gets really interesting, oh and by the way, I can also scrub it too on the interfaces myself. So if I wanted to sort of be moving my finger back and forth, I can do that as well. Actually that's my personal preference because it's just a lot easier for me to use this. Now where it gets really interesting is, Halo is actually a verb. So I'm going to go ahead and Halo him. And you can see when I touch him, he's been bracketed. And now it's taking, it's taking over control of focus and actually focusing for me. So as Omar continues to move back and forth, you can see that I is tracking him. He can actually go off to the side. And what's nice here is you see this wedge is the, um, the angle of view of the lens, but I'm still tracking him even outside of the frame of the camera. So when he walks back in, I actually know he's continuing to be in focus. And that's something that, because we're tracking 180 degrees of the scene, I can actually do that and not be limited by the angle of view of the lens or the camera or anything else. Now, as I mentioned, one of the things that we wanted to do was this is great autofocus technology, and if we had more people there, we could just simply tap on the different folks and have them move the focus around. But we talked about the notion of it's not just autofocus, not, not just autofocus, and not just manual focus. But how do I move between them? So while Omar is continuing to be tracked or haloed, as we call it, I can actually put my finger on the interface, adjust the focus to move it back to my dartboard here, maybe move it around another actor, and then when I let go, it will actually snap back to him. So I can actually move in and out seamlessly between manually focusing things and then automated focus. And it doesn't matter where he's gone, it still keeps track of him and will actually keep him in focus. So 
this notion of automated focus tracking, of better focusing tools for professional ACs, and the ability to move sort of seamlessly between them is something that we've been really excited about and working on for a long time. Uh, it removes a lot of the limitations of people kind of taking a crack at this. So the range is about 100 to 120 feet. Like I said, the angle is 180 degrees, so it's tracking everything in front of it. You can focus that if you wanted to, if you're going down a hallway or sort of a selected portion of uh, a crowd or something like that. There's no sensors. There's no uh, other bits and pieces that are going on. It basically happens dynamic in real time with this uh, scene mapping. Uh, we expect this to actually be available in about end of year and about a $2,000 $5,000 price range is what we're aiming for. Excellent. Yeah, one thing, um, I mean, I've seen other systems that use sensors to actually track, uh, whereas this one, I kind of think it has a little bit more application even in nonfiction. Because then you're, you're just, you don't have to put sensors on people. You actually have, you know, you can track them. Right, so, you know, clearly this is a problem that people know about and are trying to solve because you see a lot of people kind of taking a crack at it. So, you know, the idea of sensors, putting it on, defining offsets, you, know, you have a limited number of people you're going to work with then. It might work in some situations, but it's got limited range, it's got limited applicability. Um, it's not to say that that's bad, but, you know, we see a lot of people who are just sort of shooting and we're, they're outdoors, they're indoors. They just need to sort of say, here's my scene, here are the things that I want to keep track of, let's go. So we're showing this actually working with the existing micro remote uh, right now, which we just did a great firmware upgrade. It's a beautiful, it's almost like a brand new remote system, but it's nothing specific to this. It actually can work with any remote system. So now we're showing it with ours, but you know, we expect in the future it might work with other systems as well. So in terms of kind of our thought about the market, where it's kind of been the last 10 years, where it's kind of going, you know, clearly when we first started, um, the idea of production was really limited, the good stuff was limited to studios. It was limited to studios because of talent, but also because of money. So originally when Red Rock was founded, our goal was to produce the accessories and the equipment that allowed us to produce better, more cinematic tools, but at a price that everyone could afford. And that was, at the time, really around depth of field adapters, you know, follow focus, mad box. And I'd like to think that we really led the way in a lot of ways for other folks to come in and sort of flush those things out. In the DSLR revolution which came along, we recognized that very early on because of our experience with depth of field adapters and knowing what an important tool selective focus is. So we were kind of right there, right at the start, and I like to think we were one of the architects to help sort of bring DSLRs into the fold, which is now kind of a mainstay product. Today, we're kind of at a point in the industry where there's a lot of things going on. There's no clear one direction. In 4K, everyone wants to shoot. Whether or not it's a requirement is a whole different discussion, but everyone's wanting to shoot 4K. They're wanting to get as many angles as possible. And we're always seeing that everything is getting smaller. Budgets are getting smaller. Cameras are getting smaller. Um, the ability to move around is increasing. So what we've really been focused on is how do we enable individual operators, small crews, who are trying to get that high-end production feel, but do it in a way without adding additional crew, and frankly, not necessarily having the expertise. So you're not just seeing the tools of enablement, but you're actually seeing, to some extent, the ability to do these things without requiring you know, 10 years of experience. And gimbals are kind of the same way. You know, steady cams used to have, you know, have to work on for years and years to get any good at it, and now, kind of more or less anyone can pick up a gimbal and get at least a reasonable shot, you know? And that's an incredible thing to happen for camera movement. And now with things like focus, you know, we're trying to help move that along where an incredibly difficult experience like focus pullers, one of the hardest jobs on set, is uh, now the ability for someone, you know, basically to be able to be, do this and not really have to have to practice it for years and years. So I think going forward, you're gonna see a lot more of that kind of capability.